Hi and welcome back to another video. You know from the 3090 Ti or 4090 with this huge amount of power draw, we had a lot of discussions going on about high power draw of GPUs reaching up to 600 watts and then having a new connector, the 12 volt high power, which was highly debated. People were also thinking about why not just putting four times eight pin connectors on the card instead of the 12 volt high power. And that's what Power Color did already back then with the Devil 13 dual GPU graphics cards. And that's a card we're going to take a closer look at in today's video. There are three different versions of the Devil 13 out there. The first one was the HD7990 card. Then we had a Devil 13 with 290X X2, so dual 290X Hawaii GPUs. Whereas on this one, we have dual 390 without X dual GPU and those are Granada GPUs which made especially the 290X versus 390 dual GPU part maximum confusing because if you just take a look at the specs the 290X version so the version prior to this one has more shader units so the GPU is actually stronger than this one whereas the Granada version the 390 non-X has less shader units but more memory so this one has dual 8GB, whereas the previous card has dual 4GB. It's mind-blowing. So it's a little bit confusing and depending back then on your scenario, sometimes the older version with 290X was actually faster. So that's, that's pretty odd. And the entire card was just a monstrosity. When it comes to cooler design, back then a triple slot GPU was not as normal as it is today. Especially when it comes to the power draw, it was also not normal and also the price. It was above 700 euro, which back then was a lot. It's still a lot of money, but now it's kind of normal for GPUs. And that's the GPU we're going to take a look at in today's video. I also want to point out this has been part of my collection for a long time, but I never used it. So I don't even know if it's working or not. And that's something we're trying to figure out in today's video. Hetzen is a leading high-tech data center provider from Germany, which I have been using for many years and thus can absolutely recommend. Especially if you're looking for a reliable and strong dedicated server or cloud solutions, you should definitely check out Hetzner. Besides the insanely low pricing, I can tell you that support and service are also outstanding. Hetzner just launched a brand new dedicated server, the EX130. It is available in two versions and both will assist you in cutting through modern workloads. The EX130 is equipped with the strong 4th gen Intel Xeon Gold CPU with 24 cores. Check out the link in the description for more info regarding Hetzner and the EX130. Let's just start with the appearance of the card. And first of all, you will notice that I have a cable hanging off this card and the middle fan is different from the other ones. That is simply because the previous owner noticed at a certain point that the bearing inside the middle fan was broken and he replaced it with a fan that at least fit the size of the card. Didn't have the same kind of design, but it was just working fine when it comes to cooling performance. Also, I want to highlight this design aged extremely well. You have to think about that this with the 390 is the same design as the 290X version. And the 290X was mid-2014. So the design is about 10 years old. And if you think about it, this is a design that you could very well also use today. So the design from Power Color aged extremely well, in my opinion. And going back to like the monstrosity of the card, just look at how thick this card is. Back then, this was far from normal. Now we have a lot of like triple GPUs and even more than that, but keeping in mind that this is from 10 years ago, it's definitely something very unique. Going over to the top side, we have the Devil 13 logo. There is a Devil mode switch, which was for what I remember to run the fans at max speed and also overclock the card slightly. Now, that is probably the most unique part about this card with the four times eight pin connectors. And if you look at this, like how much size and space it takes up, kind of makes sense that they didn't want to do that on like a 4090. Also, I mean, you need four cables from your PSU. So you have to have a PSU that has the amount of PCIe cables and it definitely limits the card when it comes to just the visual design. Switching to the backside of the card, we can see the backplate, which I personally don't like as much. And the reason is pretty simple, because the type of black, the black color on the backplate, is different than the black color on the side. You can probably see it on the camera, and it kind of gives the card a cheap look, because just the, the paint is not as black, to describe it maybe a little bit easier. 
but it straight also reveals that it's a dual GPU graphics card. You can see one here and one here. We have a ton of thermal pads underneath, which we can probably see in a second once we take it apart. And we also have printed on the signature of Roy Taylor, at that time corporate vice president of AMD, now working at Riff, as far as I remember. I think he left AMD in like 2018, 2019. And also the Devil 13 logo in the center. Probably the first thing that you will spot on the backside is that we have thermal pads in three different shapes and colors. I'm not sure if that was really the stock configuration or if the previous owner just replaced some of the pads in between. There's not much to see on the backside, but one of the in interesting features was the voltage measurement points for both GPUs and also memory voltage and all that. But also we have these five LEDs on the left and also five LEDs on the right. And that was because both GPUs individually had a voltage supply of five phases each for vGPU. And apparently those LEDs mean or should showcase the load on the VRM. How this works and what exactly they're going to document, I don't know, because there is no information about that whatsoever. One thing I just noticed is that the last pin on the PCIe connector seems slightly damaged. That's something we have to observe to see if the card is going to be connected with all PCIe 16 lanes. Yeah, I think somebody definitely tried to drown those GPUs in paste, which is nothing that bad. I mean, the contact was fine, just a little bit of yeah, excessive amount, still no problem. But I kind of think that this is not the stock condition. I mean, we have a little bit of like grayish residue on this pad, whereas we have on one memory pad, a gray pad and here a different one, wouldn't make any kind of sense to get this out of the factory. One thing though, we can see that those are individual GPU cooling blocks on the left and on the right. We'll have to see if I can maybe also disconnect this plate right here. So here we have this cold plate that spreads the heat of both memory and also VRM and also the PCIe bridge chip in addition, the one on the bottom. We will get to that in a second. And here we have the two huge cooling blocks for the GPUs. If I count it correctly, we have four times eight millimeter heat pipes and one six millimeter heat pipe per GPU. Kind of cool that they made individual blocks, but also has the downside that if you would use only one GPU in a specific scenario, then you would still have a higher load and cannot dissipate heat across the other block. Then again, you could have individual fan control, but I'm not sure if that was even the case. Now look at this beauty of a card. A little bit cleaner, now remove the excess of thermal paste on the GPUs. Now pay attention to how the memory and also the GPU are aligned. You can see this GPU on the left and the memory and the VRM surrounding it. We have 16 memory ICs, which means that we have 512 megabyte of capacity per IC. On the top right here, we have auxiliary voltage and also V-Core, five uh, phases of V-Core. And if you pay attention to the GPU on the right, you can see that it's basically the same design, just rotated by 90 degrees to make more space for the VRM on the side. And also for PCIe, because you can see all the PCIe lanes are exiting the GPU right here on the bottom, whereas they're exiting right here on the bottom. And they are then fed both into the PLX chip. And the PLX chip was not only costly, but also gave the card a slight advantage over using two individual cards. Because this chip also in theory allows direct communication between both GPUs. Otherwise the data would have to be sent over the PCIe connector to the CPU and then back to the second GPU. And this would allow direct connection and also split up the 16 PCIe lanes so both GPUs in theory can access 16 lanes. Now time to find out if this card even still works. I applied a fresh amount of thermal paste, assembled everything again. Let's see. Well, we have display signal, so that's already a good sign. Now I want to highlight that we just made a jump of about two days in this video because it took me a long time to get the driver working. I had to reinstall Windows, try different driver versions because as you can see, this is quite an old driver for AMD because it's officially not supported anymore, this card. But now, at least, we have the R9 390 and also two cards correctly detected. The next step, apart from having the driver itself installed, is getting Crossfire to run, which is not that easy anymore these days. But if you go to settings and then graphics, 
all the way down to advanced, then you can find the crossfire option a little bit hidden down here. And I have to say it kind of worked fine to enable it because just after I had finally successfully installed this driver, I could get crossfire enabled. You can also find both GPUs right here. One as the primary, the other one as the secondary. What I find interesting is if I go to the secondary, I cannot find the crossfire option anymore. That could be normal, but I'm not quite sure when it comes to AMD. The thing is now also to detect if both GPUs are also working. And for that, I just for basic testing usually use GPU-C and then start the render test, not in full screen. And then check sensor tab. Now I have the secondary card selected. You can see it's doing nothing. Now switching over to the primary one, you can see it's running at 1000 megahertz on the GPU, which is correct. It's a very light load because you can see it's only pulling about 120 watt of the GPU. Now we will repeat the same, but we will switch over to the secondary and run the render test again. And as you can see, it's not applying this test on the secondary card, which is a problem because we cannot see if the secondary card works or not. Oh, and here we have the issue that I had in the previous days of testing. It's a random crash and I don't know why. Directly after finally being able to install the driver, I was like, okay, let's run some 3 d Mark. And after the first graphic test, I thought like, hey, this is nice, this is actually running. And by trying to look at the result, I had a freeze again, which was kind of weird. And then after trying this several times and getting freezes in different um, situations, not necessarily during load, but also during Chrome or like, I don't know, I was like, okay, let's, let's try some gaming load. And first of all, I thought, nice, this is finally running. But then I noticed that only one of both GPUs is actually under load and GPU number two is not doing anything. So okay, then I thought let's check AMD driver settings and I went to the remnant from the Ashes profile where I noticed that Crossfire is always disabled, which was kind of weird because just from my personal experience with this game, both SLI and Crossfire are no problem for remnant at all. So I just activated this and went back to the game. But as you can see, I didn't even manage to get through the main menu. I just was stuck during the intro. I tried it several times, had different kind of success, but never managed to get past the main menu. By the way, if you ever wonder why I even use this very specific game, the reply is pretty simple because I love this game. I used to play it a lot and now I'm stuck at Remnant 2, which was released mid of this year. And I will also switch to Remnant 2 once I'm done with the game and once I found a good save point. So I have a reproducible spot for the gaming benchmarks, but it's, it's just a nice game I like to play and I can absolutely recommend if you like Souls-like games. Okay, so I switched back to 3D Mark, where we know that multi-GPU support is for sure not a problem. Then I checked again and in the driver, both globally and also in the 3D Mark profile, Crossfire is enabled. So I ran Firestrike again, but as you can see with FPS Mon, GPU 2 is again not utilized. Then I changed even from Windows 11 to an older version of Windows 10 and even tried a lot of older versions for the GPU driver, but nothing seemed to fix it. It was in the end all the same result, just a lot of random crashes. I meanwhile spent about three or four days testing this card and yeah, I'm at a point where I just don't make progress anymore. I tried everything, like different platforms and Windows versions and driver versions and everything and tried to narrow it down. The status right now is that whenever I just use the primary GPU, like Crossfire disabled, or even if Crossfire is enabled, but the game does not support Crossfire, everything works fine. But whenever I switch it on, I even have like stuttering to death or it just freezes randomly after a certain amount of time, which could be an indicator that the second GPU has an issue, could be some BGA problem, could be GPU faulty, memory faulty, whatever. At least the voltages are all there, that all works fine but something is definitely wrong with the card. Yeah, and at that point I will just uh, make sure that Sheik is not putting her paw into the, into the graphics card and I will send the card to probably Chris Fix and see if he can investigate it further just to see maybe if, he, if there's something he can fix. If that's the case, we will definitely do a follow-up video on this. Thanks for tuning in. I still hope you liked this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.